I think it, Pennsylvania countryside is about the prettiest in the world to hike. I, I, I've just never been any place where it's quite as nice. Uncle Jim, what type of horses are these? Well, these are harness horses. They're standard breds. They, they call them uh, standard breds. They're race horses, really. Uh, these, of course, are the babies and their mothers. And uh, they are really quite pretty animals. I, I think we better get out and take a close look at them. What do you think, huh? Okay. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> These are the yearlings, Michael and, and Gail. They're year old, and uh, their birthday's on January 1st. Of course, every horse has a first birthday January 1st. How are they born? Well, they're just like uh, human beings, a uh, mother and a father. Uh, the one difference is it takes them 11 months, where it's uh, nine months for a baby to be born. But they're... Uh, they're a lot like humans in, in, in a lot of ways. How come some of them grow up to be racehorses? Well, actually, Michael, all of them are supposed to be racehorses. They're all bred and born to be racehorses. It's, uh, it's just a question of when they're old enough to race, whether they have the ability or not. Uh, after they get to be a two-year-old, they'll go to a trainer, and the trainer will break them, and he'll give them manners, and teach them how to how to race you know mm -hmm. and if they uh, if they show some speed then then they're a racehorse it's it's kind of automatic if they do that you see see now that what they're doing now is uh, what you would expect a thoroughbred to do that's a gallop or a run but once they uh, once they learn to race they'll pace or they'll trot in other words just one foot after another you see and instead of that constant running or galloping that you see uh, other horses do. So they are really pretty, aren't they? Yep. Aren't they pretty? And don't forget now, these are these are still young. They've they've never had a halter on them. As a matter of fact, nobody's nobody's ever handled them at all. Michael, this is the Carlisle Fair, of course, and one of 22 fairs in the state of Pennsylvania. Harness racing is the big attraction, but then they have the Midway over there and the Forest Hills, and it's really a fun place to be, and actually, it's where harness racing began. Was on a Saturday morning, summer of my 14th year, my uncle took me over to see my first county fair.
Speaking of running, Gail and Michael, let's take a trip out to the Meadows racetrack where people out in western Pennsylvania have a great view of nighttime harness racing and also one of the Grand Circuit's classic attractions. Tonight at the Meadows, you're going to see a race they call the Adios. It's a $90,000 pacing event named for one of harness racing's all-time greats. It's raced in three heats. The first five finishers of the first heat will race against the first five finishers of the second heat. That would be, of course, in the third race, and that's how they determine the Adios winner. Horses have reached the starting gate. They're hot, and they are racing along the inside. That's Barry Hanover with a slight lead, but right up there to challenge. Goodbye, Columbus. Harport Adios off stride. Hilarious Way is coming on to challenge Barry Gerard Wolfley. Barry Gerard is second a length and a half. Goodbye, Columbus is third by a length and three quarters. Barry Hanover is fourth by two. Allie Fighter is fifth a length and a half. Hilarious Way by two and a half lengths. They are racing, getting in front of strikeout by a head. But coming on now to take over the lead is Racy Prince. Racy Prince up alongside, and then going right on by. Racy Prince by a length. Now coming right back is Jay Time. Jay Time is going to the front. Jay Time by two full lengths. Strikeout begins to come back. Strikeout moving up swiftly. Also moving up is Vincent Bye-bye into the home stretch. Time has been caught by strikeout, and on the outside, Linden Bye-Bye. Linden Bye-Bye has the lead. That's Linden Bye-Bye under the wire. They're up, and they are racing. That strikeout going out there with Linden Bye-Bye, but charging up from the outside is Jay Time to challenge for the lead. Moving into the straightaway, that is strikeout in front. Goodbye, Columbus is second. Jay Time is third. As they come by the stands, Barry Hanover is third. Then the by by is fourth. Allie Fighter is fifth. Hilarious way next in line. Corey trying to close the gap on strikeout. Jay Time is coming on on the outside. But a strikeout staying in front. It's going to be tight. Ladies and gentlemen, a dead heat for win. A dead heat for win, co-adios champion. You know, it's exciting to watch an event like this. Strike or one at Pocono Downs up in the ski area. Or at Liberty Bell. Of course, it, you know, it really takes a lot to make an adios champion. And as with all the champions, it all starts in training. to go around the track so many times. Well, that's exercise. They they call it uh, legging them up, which means they're they are getting muscles. You know, they're they're these are only babies. All the ones that he's walking around with uh, with with a man behind them. They've never had a harness on. They've never really had any exercise as such. You know, and they are really just getting muscles on them, like an athlete, like a football player, a hockey player. You know, you know what I mean. Make them strong is really what they're what they're looking to do. And the first thing they do, of course, is walk behind them, the way you've seen them here. They have to walk. What they're doing is they're trying to teach them manners. That's, that's what they call it, manners. After they learn what the harness is and how it feels to have somebody steering them from behind with those reins that they're steering them with, then they put a card on them. It's amazing how quickly they learn to do these things. And by the time they get to the races, they know everything. How long does it take them to, to get into a race? Well, with the yearlings, that's these year-old horses, it takes them, oh, let's see, about six months. By next spring, they'll be racing in the stakes and out in front of the big... I'm sure Sam and Marsha will show us the one they take care of. Let's go and see that cola there, shall we? Sam and Marsha Whitland here take care of this three-year-old colt. 
big shot Rodney. And he, at the time, I understand he really thinks he's a big shot, too, from what I hear. Uh, Sam, how old are you? 17. How about you, Marcia? 14. How'd you ever get to, to doing this, and how long have you been doing it? Well, my dad bought the first horse 10 years ago, and then we all grew up into it, started pitching and working. You start when you're four years old? No, but <laughs> when I got a little bit older. Yeah. Why? Do you, do you like it? Is, it? is it fun? We all love horses, and we enjoy working with them. How about you, Sam? You, uh, you jog them? And... Right. I've been uh, jogging since I was 10 and training since I was 12. And uh, that's seven years all together. So my dad's been doing it for three more years than I have. You intend to be a driver trainer? Well, things are pretty rough when you're young, but I'm going to give it a try. Good. Well, good luck with Big Shot Rodney there. Thank you. Driver, Uncle Jim. Well, Gil, it's it's pretty much the same as everything else. You you have to uh, want to work. That's that's all important. And then naturally, the love of an animal. So you know, gotta love the horse and love to be around them. And then it's just practice from there on in. But there are a lot of young people uh, getting into the harness business. Young Peter Houghton, who's still in school, but he drives in the summertime in the circuits. And then a fellow like Ronnie Dancer here, who's who's been uh, well, he. Driven into Hamiltonian, and and he's he, he's been all over. But he's a young fellow that I want you to meet. Right, this is Gail and uh, and Hi. Michael. Learn how to drive a harness horse. Come on, sit over here. Okay. Come on, I'll get in there. Michael, that's it. You all set? Um, around how many races have you been in? Well, I can't count the number of races I've been in, but I started driving. When I, in 1968, when I drove my first race. How about you? Is this the first time you've been behind a harness horse? Yes. How about you, Michael? Yes. Do you like it? Uh-huh, it's really yeah. fun. Well, this is a pacer, and right now he is pacing. And what I mean by pacing is that, if you notice, the legs on the same side, the right front and the right hind, are moving in unison, in the same direction at the same time. And this is what we call a pacer. Now, when we want him to go a little, we just chirp to him, and he'll speed it up a little. I don't want him to speed it up. Am I going too fast for you? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, hold on. How about you? Are you afraid? No. OK. What was your biggest race? Slow down. Well, the biggest race that I was in would have to be the Hamiltonian. I was the youngest driver to drive in the Hamiltonian, and it was a great thrill. You know, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven. And you, Michael? Ten. Do you know there's uh, lady drivers now in, in harness racing? Maybe someday you could be a lady harness driver. And how about you, Michael? You have any ambitions to be a harness driver? Yes. How old do you have to be to be a harness driver? Well, you can get your license when you're 16 years old, and I feel the sport needs more young people in it. I feel that some of the best athletes in the world do many great things when they're young, and it's going to be the same way in harness racing. I was the youngest to drive in the Hamiltonian, but believe me, there's a lot of good young drivers, and I'd like to see more kids like you get a chance. So would I. Now, as far as steering the horse, when you go around the turn, you just pull on the right line to turn him to the right a little, and you pull on the left line to make him go left. And to slow up, well, you holler, whoa, and that'll slow up on you. And pull back on the lines a little. Yeah, he's going down a little. Is he going too fast for you? Yeah. Well, you're young. Come on, huh? Are you holding on? Yeah. OK. As Ronnie told you, Gail and Michael, you start when you're young. And at the country fairs, 19-year-old Peter Houghton is learning what it takes to make it as a harness racing driver. And with them ponies burning and the wheels are turning, finest thing I ever seen beneath the summer sun. And sails are flashing with their colors flashing and the feeling that I'm getting wild.
You know, Gail and Michael, in country racing or even on the Grand Circuit, there's a lot of fun. And it's a real country flavor here at Liberty Bell Park when they have the Colonial Trot. Old family comes out and they enjoy the barbecued chicken and the corn and the cob and hot dogs and sauerkraut. Tonight, they're going to get a chance to see one of the great horses of our time, a trotter they call Super Bowl. This is the big night here, Gail and Michael. This is the Colonial, big race here at Liberty Bell. And this is the this is the paddock area. Uh, I don't suppose you know what that is, do you? No. <laughs> well, here's a man that can tell us all about it, Mr. Vaughn, who is the the paddock judge. Come on in here, we're by. This is Gail and, and Michael, and they were asking me what is the uh, what is the the paddock? What happens here, Bob? But this is the area where we keep the horses from time before the race, and all the as you can see, all the horses are in here. And they hook them here. We hook them here. We check their identification. We check they have the right shoes on, the right equipment, and uh, basically, if it's the right horse, and get them to the racetrack on the time described by the deciding judge. And uh, Mr. Vaughn has charge of this whole thing. It's his responsibility. Bob, thank you very right, much. Sir. See you later. Now, well, let's let's go in and take a look at some of these, shall we? Okay. Before the big race. young friend Peter Houghton who would love to be driving in this one waiting for his down by the rail so let's join him to watch his dad drive Spartan Hanover and try to beat Super Bowl in this the biggest race in Pennsylvania the, the biggest first over 100,000 right now we're watching Stanley Dancer he's in the lead is that what you expected with Super Bowl won the Hamiltonian well right he won the last seat of the Hamiltonian right in front and the source race was well in front the other drivers are just trying to wait for their turn hoping that he makes some kind of mistake or something anything that would show some kind of development where they can make a move he's starting to open up now he's uh, have a nice long stretch here, so anything could happen. Super Bowl is taking command, though. He's all by himself now. I think he's showing his supremacy in this race. Here, here comes your dad. He's starting to move. Number five. He, he'll get up to second. And I believe in the black and blue, with Howard Bison is third with flush board. And Johnny Simpson fifth. The Colonial turned out just about as, as everybody would expect, didn't it? I think the Super Bowl is, is probably the best other three-year-old crop this year. He showed his supremacy in the Hamiltonian, and I, he's just a, a real great horse right now. Maybe someday you'll get to drive one like him. I hope so, anyway. I hope so, too. 